Hi, my name is Roy Perisher. We've just completed shooting a 12-part video series on pipe drafting. We've included manual AutoCAD and ProPipe applications. This series has been developed to enhance the textbook that is included in this program. We have discussed such topics as pipe, fittings, flanges, valves. We've gone into mechanical equipment. We've discussed the creation of arrangement drawings, sections, and elevations, as well as piping isometrics. We've also discussed the customization of AutoCAD and ProPipe as well. Let's now take a look at some excerpts from each of the programs in this series. Hello, my name is Roy Parisher, and this is part one of the pipe drafting series using manual AutoCAD and ProPipe applications. In this series, we're going to be discussing many of the components required to do pipe drafting. These are going to include things like pipe, fittings, flanges, valves. We'll also talk about mechanical equipment. We'll be discussing flow diagrams, how to create those, the symbols used on flow diagrams. We'll be talking about piping arrangement drawings, sections, elevations. We'll also get into isometrics, creating those to be used in the fabrication of the pipe, as well as things like codes and specifications so that we make sure that we are on the right page, so to speak, with the client and, and meeting their needs. Some other things we'll be discussing will be how to customize AutoCAD if you're an AutoCAD user, and we'll also be introducing to you ProPipe and a number of the ProPipe products. What we've done is we've decided to create a new series so that we can introduce to you some of the more modern techniques of pipe drafting. Some of the older companies are using manual techniques and they have for many, many years. But with the advent of the computers, we are now going to be introducing to you ProPipe and also how to draw using AutoCAD as well. Included in this series is the Pipe Drafting and Design textbook as well as the workbook and also for educational institutions, the teacher's guide that has the solutions to all the problems that are included in the workbook. Let's discuss the discipline of pipe drafting for just a little bit. Now even though this series is going to dwell primarily on the petrochemical industry, there are many other applications where pipe drafters are needed. The fabrication of pipe configuration certainly requires that a pipe drafter be employed by a fabrication company. The operating company who might be operating the facility is certainly going to need to have So now let's look at how we would draw this elbow in AutoCAD. As we can see here, we already have the two center lines for an intersecting turn in the pipe. What we're going to now do is use the offset command to establish the ends of the elbow, knowing that we have a 14 inch elbow, one and one half times 14 will again give us a 21 inch center to end dimension. So I'm going to set my offset measurement to 21 inches. I will be offsetting both to the right and down below to establish an intersection. From this point, I'll be using the arc command. The center of our arc will be at the intersection. The start point of the arc will be at this intersection. And as you can see, we can construct our arc to represent the center line of the elbow. Once again, using the offset command set to a 7 inch measurement, we can offset the center line below and above to establish our 14 inch measurement. By extending the lines throughout the end of the elbow's large diameter, what we're then able to do is to trim and create 
our long radius elbow. We can continue on by erasing the center lines if necessary and therefore we have our elbow created. Of course in double line piping this would be a center line representing the center line of the elbow and of course our pipe would continue on. As our toolbar comes up we'll notice that flanges are here in the center. This particular flange is a well neck flange but notice as we press the pick button and hold it down we're able to display the other flanges. We'll be discussing these in more detail later but you see Pro Pipe has a full complement of flanges. By selecting the well neck flange we are asked to again locate the end of the flange by simply selecting that, I am then asked to identify the direction. I can again be drawing to the left or I can draw to the right. Once again, I do not have to establish the length. We have already determined the length in the setup, which we will discuss later. But I simply locate the direction and ProPipe draws the flange. Notice that they are using the angled hub. Again, had you elected to draw that in AutoCAD, that would have been comparable to this method here. Let's now look at how the pound ratings affect the thickness of the forged steel from which the flanges are made. Here we can see that we have a 3 inch 900 pound flange. We also here have a 2 inch 600 pound flange. And then we have a 2 inch 150 pound flange. Notice the thickness of the hub is significantly different on each of the flanges. So again, it's critical that you know which pound rating you're using so that you can select the proper flange. Now let me also point out here that the pound rating does not limit that flange to that maximum pressure. It's simply a pressure rating. The pressure rating is based on a variable between temperature and pressure, and the 150 pound flange is not limited just to 150 pounds. In fact, if we decrease the temperature to 100 degrees, the flange is actually good for a rating of 270. Now, it's not too difficult on small diameter pipe as far as controlling their valves, but when we get into larger diameter pipe, the valves have to be installed in special situations so that we ha can have access to those. And let's go out to the field and see a little bit about how a larger diameter valve is actually installed. Now as we talk about valves, remember it's important that sizes will make a difference. In fact, in this case right here, notice that the hand wheel is so tall that if it were installed in the vertical position, the operator or the maintenance worker would not be able to operate it. So what has been done is that the valve has been rotated so that the operator has easy access to open and close the valve. Now this particular valve right here, being for emergency water, has actually been locked open. You see that there's physically a chain and a padlock so that someone cannot come out and close the valve. You also notice that a tag has been placed on here, do not close the valve. So it's very important that in some instances we do not close or open valves accidentally to uh, create some type of hazard inside of the facility. Now there are frequent occasions when a valve may be placed in even a more inaccessible location. So let's go back out to the field and look at that. Now another situation that occurs quite frequently is when a valve is inaccessible. As we can see, this valve is quite a distance up the side of this tank right here, and it would be very difficult to get someone out here with a ladder to operate the valve. So we use what is known as a chain operator, and a chain operator is basically a sprocket type device that attaches to the hand wheel of the valve, and we, it allows us to again pull the chain. The chain is maybe two to three feet off the ground, and by simply pulling the chain, we can open or close the valve. 